Oh my gosh, Harley. So I was totally listening to your band last night and it's amazing. Thanks, John. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I'm actually a bit of a songwriter myself and I hope it's cool. I wrote a little number for your band. Do you want to hear it? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It might be a problem with legal. So no, 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 it's totally cool. Trust me. Okay, so it goes like this. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, sorry. All right. See you later, though. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay. everyone and welcome to DC Daily. I'm Clark Wolf and today we're revisiting the ninth episode of Young Justice Outsiders, Home Fires. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. oh, is that Home Fire? Um, this yeah. is Home oh, Fire, right? Oh. Oh. You're a house and those are the fire. <laughs> Boom. All right, let's dive in. Lady Shiva prevents Orm's assassination attempt against the next generation of superheroes. Does this mean that the light has a moral code? I don't know that I'd call it a moral code. Thank you so much for your interest, John. <laughs> I just really want to hear what you have to I say. I know. I think I think it was more a uh, a chess move. Like uh, Lady Shiva knows what that move would lead to. She even says something like the retribution would be extreme from this. So I don't think it was a moral code. Just more of a planned long-term game. Mm. Mm. That's what it was for me. Yeah, I definitely don't think that it's a moral code. The way that I see it in my head is that it's a collateral damage code. They don't want what they know would happen if they really push that envelope. They know what's gonna happen after that. So it's like, it's, it's about not starting a war and that's what it is. They realize the collateral damage and that's what they're like, mm, we probably shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with innocence. Mm -hmm. I would agree and uh, to add, Lord knows, I was happy that Orm died. <laughs> uh, you are the, the number one Orm not defender, an Orm fan. right? You love oh, Orm. Oh, oh my God, I love, love Orm. Orm. Love Orm. Just okay. kidding. Oh. 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 I was going, she had me fooled. That was such a twist. Oh, Powerful psych. Yeah. That was really good. <laughs> yeah, you liked when he got decapitated. I love it. That was it. pretty great. Yeah, this, <laughs> this moment in Young Justice is a great response to a cynical question that might crop up the more that you think about superhero universes, which the question is, how come the bad guys don't ever just take out all of the superheroes' loved ones and kids and just end it? Or take out the next generation mm -hmm. of heroes when they're babies, just do it. And the show answers that question by going, yeah, it's like Superman's baby was there, all the, you know, all the little kids are running around. Oh. Um, right. And the show answers the question by going, if the villains did this, they believe that the heroes would mm -hmm. lose it so badly that they would retaliate, it would be mutually assured destruction, mm -hmm. which I buy it. I buy that reasoning in that world. And it lets the villains like the light still be these puppet masters that kind of know everything without asking the question, why doesn't the light with their knowledge just mm -hmm. take it to that step? Because they know it would be mutually assured destruction. See, I've heard all these warm and fuzzy answers and let me tell you, <laughs> I ain't buying it. Oh boy. Because you know what? I think the light, they're just ball hogs. They want the opportunity to kill all the family members and the kids. They don't want Orm. To them, Orm's just a random nobody, a soggy dude from the ocean. They don't want him coming up and stealing their thunder. They want the shine from mm. killing all the heroes. Oh, man. That is quite the hot take. Yeah, that yeah. is. Very hot. Yeah. Sizzling hot in, take. In, in Humphrey's hot take. <laughs> <laughs> We've got more to talk about with this episode, but right now, here's some news from around DC. Justice team successfully fools Lobo. Yeah. So could yeah. he potentially be turned into an ally in the future? Mm. Okay, I got an idea for this. I got a Humphrey's hot take. Oh, an boy, HHT. Uh, because he's an anti-hero, <laughs> so it's kind of in the middle if he could ever be a good guy. But if you remember, he got his pinky shing cut yep. off and it fell to the ground yep. and he didn't pick it up when he left. Lobo can regenerate <laughs> from a cell of blood. So they could grow a full Lobo from that pinky God, no. and nurture him to be an ally. Kid Whoa. Lobo. Kid wow. Lobo. You could get Kid Lobo from yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Lobito. Yeah, I, lo, little Lobito. Lobito. Uh, uh, which is Spanish for 
baby wolf. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I was from the age of zero to six. That's oh! Little uh, Clark Lobito. Um, I love Lobo. I love the main man in this show, and I feel like we can't forget he does not like being screwed with, and the light messed with him first. So if the team, if the Justice League ever convinced Lobo, hey, you were lied to, man. They were, you were being used as a puppet, you know, join the side of good, but also maybe they paid him, then I think that, yeah, he could be mm. turned into an ally. Mm. Are you kidding? Yeah, oh. no. <laughs> yeah, <God>. no. <laughs> Dude, yeah. F Lobo. Whoa! <laughs> Straight up Talk about an to... HHT. Uh, he... hey, that's a different kind of HHT. Harley oh, Hotte. Harley yeah. yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> He straight up tried to kill my dude. Ah, yeah. Oh, yes. Forager. 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 He thought he did. He thought he succeeded. Yeah. And yeah. I lost it. I, I hate Lobo. No person in their right of mind could try to injure a creature like Forager and then suddenly become an ally. That He's not sense. a person. He's Zarnian. Well, mm -hmm. but whatever. Uh, <laughs> Detail. Uh, the details are small. But no, never. He cannot be an ally. I hate Lobo. Okay. Wow. Harley has wow. spoken. That is a Harley hot take. No. Um, I think, to kind of go back to, to what Hector was saying, it's Lobo will be your ally if you're going to pay him his ally rate. Right. Wow. Uh, you have to contact his agent, then you negotiate the terms of the contract and what the actual rate is for him being an ally, and then he's your dude. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's all about this. It's all about this. But is he really, is but really no. an ally if you're paying him? I, there was a, a version of Lobo. Is this your shirt? Or did you buy that shirt? What? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. I get it. You see what I'm saying? Wow. That is ice cold. That, that was uh, nonsense. Did, did you walk into that store and someone was like, man, you deserve this shirt. This shirt is yours. You know did what? You, did you buy it? This you know shirt what? is your ally. I bought, I bought the shirt so I could wear it. I didn't buy the shirt's loyalty. Uh, <laughs> what? It's not doing loyalty? you any favors anyway. Oh! 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 <laughs> there was a good version of Lobo, DC Rebirth. Yes, it wasn't the most popular. It was kind of a lame version of him, but he has fought for good once before, mm -hmm. so I don't think it's that completely inconceivable that he would do it again. He's an anti-hero. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm, no. So I don't know. I, I won't put it out of the question like some people over here, <laughs> but uh, I don't, possibly, and I'd like to think he'd do it uh, without money. No. Mm. Without the money. Without okay. Harley, yeah. I don't know if this is gonna change your opinion at all, but Lobo is an animal lover. Is he? He is. I he he raises dog. dolphins, space dolphins. Okay, but why'd he try to kill my man? Yeah, of, because of this. Money. Because of this. Cheddar cheese, Cheddar cheese baby. Cheddar cheese. Exactly. <laughs> Anyone who could do Forager wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're Team Forager over here. And now for some world's finest <laughs> news. chance to talk with legendary writer and editor Denny O'Neill. Check it out. How do I see Batman? He would probably be pretty boring as a conversationalist. I wouldn't want to hang out with him. Uh, after Sunday Mass, my father, he would stop at what we called in St. Louis a confectionery, you would call it a mom and pop store here, and buy a quart of milk for the family, and there was a wall full of comic books, and I could buy for 10 cents a comic book. I can remember that I loved Batman more than Superman. I don't have to search hard to find things to relate to in the character, the intelligence, the determination to wipe out crime, even, even though he knows that's not possible. Batman back then was not a consistent character. They didn't even think about things like Bibles and characterization and structure. I never heard that word for the first 20 years or so that I worked in comics. It was such a loosey-goosey business back then because of the demise of the TV series. They were gonna to continue to publish Batman, but it was kind of on shaky ground. But the one that is given credit by historians 
for turning the character around and creating the Batman we now know was a 15-page story in Detective Comics called Secrets of the Waiting Grave. I went in to see Julie Schwartz. I was probably wearing tie-dye, and I, this is gonna be hard to believe, long hair. And Julie, in all the time I worked for him, never went without a white shirt and a tie and a suit. And we circled each other like martial artists getting ready for a fight. Hippie me, uh, super straight guy Julie, and so, this is my terrible imitation of Julie Schwartz. Well, my boy, <clears throat> what do you got? And I had Secret of the Waiting Grace. I thought, this has to be gothic. That's something they have missed since the 40s. It has to have that, that kind of spooky flavor to it. If you really saw a guy with a scallop cape and a mask outside today, you wouldn't be scared of him. So it's poetic license. He's got to at least make it easy for them to believe that such a person could exist. Well, I was not aware at the time I did it that I had changed Batman. Really, Paul Levitz told me that Secret of the Waiting Graves was the, the turning point. Everything I did was implicit in what Bill Finger did. I can't blame total originality, I can just claim the ability to recognize a good thing when I saw one. Uh, what is the term that the academics use? A culture bearer. I have been accused of being a culture bearer because of Green Lantern, Green Arrow. And the way this was explained to me is the world was really ready for that. It was waiting for somebody to come up with that idea and I happened to be the one who did it. Well, Batman is kind of the same way. There's so many different kinds of stories you can tell through Batman that don't violate what's been established about Batman. He is a great character, and he's a great storytelling tool, but you can go almost anywhere with him. Frank Miller, for example, has played him a, a lot darker than I have, and Frank's stories work. So at the end of the day, the answer to all of those kind of questions is, does it work? What if there was like a miniseries mm -hmm. where Lobo gets hired to become Forager's buddy? And they're like mm. space buddies, like buddy mm. cops out in space, and they bond, and it's like uh, the opposites attract. Oh, like, like, really... like, 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 um, 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 give us a good reference. Come I was on, gonna say on. forty-eight hours, the but pretty, pretty good. Forty-eight the... hours work. Yes. No, I'm picturing exactly. a Dwayne the Rock Johnson vehicle, yes. right? Like, oh, you know, yes. Lobo. You know, big tough and guy. Lobo. Or, Kevin Hart is Forager. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Or so like Ride Along. Yes, Ride Along. Ride Along too. Going like Tooth Fairy, but yeah. Wow. What did you just? I can I can see it already. Like Lobo once tried to kill Forager. <laughs> oh, but Forager uh, hired Lobo, and now uh, Lobo is Forager's friend. <laughs> uh, All this right, friend. bug over here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great talk about Young Justice, but now we're going to take a look at episode four of Krypton, the mm. word of Rao. Yeah. Seg and Adam aren't the only people on Krypton who know about Brainiac. So should Seg trust the mysterious commander? 